A 30 year old female complains of flushing, sweating, irritation and itching of the pre-auricular area, this area, on eating or chewing or even seeing the uh, food, especially the sore food. And she also had a history of pyrotidectomy around two years back. So the diagnosis is very obvious and it is Frey syndrome. So what is this Frey syndrome? And the, these are all the synonyms of Frey syndrome. Uh, bilateral syndrome or auriculotemporal nerve syndrome or dupe syndrome or gestatory hyperhidrosis. Hyperhidrosis means oversweating. So all these are the synonyms. And it was first uh, described in 1853. First reported in 1853 by Julius Bilateral. And in 1923, the first accurate description was given by Dr. Lucia Frey is a Polish uh, physician and she is the first female academic neurologist uh, from uh, Europe who accurately described the, what is Frey syndrome and what is the pathophysiology behind it. That is why it was given the name of Frey syndrome. So it is something related with the auriculotemporal nerve. So the culprit is auriculotemporal nerve. Here you can see the ear area skin subcutaneous tissue and this is parotid region with the aortic ganglion and the auriculotemporal nerve. So this auriculotemporal nerve is the culprit behind Frey syndrome. So let us see uh, the anatomy or the brief description of auriculotemporal nerve. So this auriculotemporal nerve has got two roots. One the superior sympathetic root which is somatosensory and an inferior parasympathetic root. So the sympathetic root is through the mandibular branch of trigeminal nerve and it supplies the auricle, then the external auditory canal, then temporomandibular joint, lateral surface of tympanic membrane and the temporal scalp. And it is uh, a vasomotor and also uh, supplies the sweat glands. Okay, the sweat glands and the vessels. And the parasympathetic root is originating from the inferior salivatory nucleus and the glossopharyngeal nerve. That is the ninth cranial nerve. And it passes through the inferior petrosal nerve and reaches the aortic ganglion. So this one, this is the aortic ganglion. And postganglionic parasympathetic fibers passes through the auriculotemporal nerve. Auriculotemporal nerve. And it supplies secretory motor uh, uh, supply to the parotid gland. Blue colored is a parotid gland. Okay. So uh, after parotidectomy, what will happen? This parotid is not there. So there is an aberrant regeneration of this postganglionic parasympathetic fibers through the existing sympathetic supply to the uh, sweat glands and the vessels of this uh, area. In which all areas? The auricle, external artery canal, and the uh, preauricular area. And so that what will happen? So the parasympathetic secretory motor fibers which are intended to secrete saliva on stimulation uh, from the parotid gland is the parotid gland is not there now. So what will happen? These parasympathetic fibers will appear in regeneration through the existing sympathetic pathway. So what will happen? On seeing the food, instead of production of saliva, it's not there, gland is not there. So it will go and uh, stimulate or dilate the vessels which will lead to uh, flushing and also it will stimulate the sweat glands. So there will be sweating and irritation will happen. So that is the pathophysiology of Frey syndrome. Okay, it's very simple. The postganglionic parasympathetic fibers which are uh, intended to give a secretory motor stimulation to the parotid gland after parotidectomy, it will apparent uh, regeneration of the uh, parasympathetic uh, postganglionic fibers to the already existing sympathetic innervation of this preauricular area, the sweat gland and the uh, vessels of that area, and so that there will be flushing, sweating, irritation uh, of this preauricular area. Okay, on seeing the or chewing the food. 
That is the pathophysiology of Frey syndrome. And in the causes, it is not only parotid surgery which causes Frey syndrome. There are so many other reasons also, like uh, submandibular gland surgeries, repair of mandibular fractures, temporomandibular joint injury, neck dissection and infection, and severe trauma to the parotid gland. And the commonest one is uh, parotidectomy itself. And after uh, this insult to the parasympathetic postganglionic fibers, it has to go and uh, it has to grow from here. It has to re the sympathetic fibers destined for sweat glands and also the vessels of the uh, this region. So it will take time. Okay. It will take some time and uh, that is around uh, 6 to 18 months following this insert. Okay. And it is reported that it happens in around 4 to 62 percentage of patients after parotidectomy. Okay. So it, uh, usually it takes from 6 to 2 months after the insert this um, symptom will happen. So what is the symptom? That is on uh, gestatory stimulation. There is uh, flushing because the vessels are uh, dilating, there is flushing and along with that there is sweating, pain, irritation of which all areas? The uh, skin overlying the parotid area, that is the preauricular area and also the temporal scalp. Okay, then uh, skin around the temporomandibular joint and the auricular area. Diagnosis of this condition is easy, that is patient may have a typical history and also there will be past history of either surgery to the parotid area or the submandibular gland area, uh, submandibular gland or there will be history of neck dissection or injury to the um, parotid area or the temporomandibular joint or there will be repair of fracture of mandible etc. And physical examination obviously you can see the scar of the um, concerned surgery will be there. And another important test is a minor starch iodine test. What is that? So in the pre-auricular area, first you paint with the iodine. Once it is dry, first paint the pre-auricular area with iodine. Once it is dry, apply starch over that and give a gestatory stimuli like a sore candy. So that salivation will happen. And if the, uh, on salivation, this starch will become wet or moist and on um, in the presence of iodine, the wet starch, the color will change to brown or blue color. Okay, so first paint the area with iodine, preauricular area is painted with iodine and once the iodine is dry, the starch is applied over that and the patient is given a gestatory stimuli like a sore candy and uh, in Frey syndrome, this starch will get moist and in the presence of iodine, it will become blue or brown in color. Okay, so that is that will be positive in case of a Frey syndrome. I told you that the incidence of Frey syndrome after parotidectomy is around 4 to 62 percentage. That is quite high. So, we know the basic reason, the cause of this, that is the aberrant re uh, innovation of this parasympathetic fibers parasympathetic secretory motor fibers to the sweat glands. So if we keep a barrier between this, in between this, if we are keeping a barrier, this uh, aberrant re of this parasympathetic secretory motor with the sweat glands in the parotid area will not happen. Okay. There are so many techniques which are under trial and uh, most of them is definitely Reducing the incidence of this Frey syndrome. I will explain the, some of the important ones. One is a thick skin flap. That is at the time of elevating the skin flap in the parotid region. Include the fat and also the superficial musculo-aponeurotic tissue along with that. So that this uh, sweat glands will not get exposed. You know the sweat glands are the root of hair follicle. So if the flap is made thick, the exposure will be reduced and uh, definitely the incidence of this uh, occurrence of Frey syndrome will be reduced. The second one is an the second one is an 
acellular dermal matrix or ADM uh, which is an extracellular connective tissue graft made by decellularization of the dermal uh, dermis so that this dermal dermis is made acellular and this will act as a barrier between the parotid bed and the overlying skin of this region okay and the third one uh, that is an autologous fat implantation to this area so that it will also uh, improve this post surgical contour defect and also that uh, cosmetically it is also very good okay and third is an uh, smash flap so partial muscular aponeurotic system flap this smash flap can be elevated along with the uh, parotid surgery and it is kept as a barrier uh, in order to prevent the regeneration and uh, fifth next is a temporoparietal fascia flap temporoparietal fascia flap it is a vascularized facial flap based on superficial temporal artery it is elevated and kept between the skin and the uh, surgical defect we can also use sternocleidomastoid muscle flap okay uh, sternocleidomastoid muscle flap elevated and kept between the skin and the uh, defect so these are the some known techniques to prevent development of Ray syndrome this can be done at the time of surgery and uh, other than preventing this Ray syndrome it will definitely improve the cosmetic appearance by um, improving the facial contour defect okay and if it has happened, what can we do? There are medical treatment and also surgical treatment for Frey syndrome. So in the treatment, we can give topical antiperspirants can be applied to the involved area. But it is not of much use and it is very short acting also. Second tried one is injection of alcohol into this ortigandium. Okay. Injection of alcohol into this ortigandrian but if you inject alcohol into the ortigandrian this will uh, make its effect on mandibular branch of trigeminal nerve also so there will be so much of trouble to the patient than the uh, desired effect so undesired effect will be more than the desired effect so that is also not used nowadays and another uh, beneficial one is botulinum toxic local injection to 2.5 units per centimeter square of the affected area okay and what is the mechanism of action in this uh, connection you have to remember a protein that is SNAP25 that is synaptosomal, synaptosomal associated protein 25 so basically this botulinum is an anticholinergic so it will act by blocking the acetylcholine release that is by breaking this SNAP 25 protein okay so that there will be chemical denervation and paralysis of striated muscles and also sweat glands and this action is uh, this uh, come to the action start within four to seven days and there will be uh, absence of flushing and sweating and the patient will be symptomatically very much better okay so botulinum uh, toxin local injection is a preferred method nowadays but the disadvantage is that this symptom or the action of this will be reduced over a period so that repeated injections will, will be needed that but that too at a gap of one or two years gap okay and this uh, repeated injection at a gap of two years will not cause much of problem to the patient okay so botulinum local injection is uh, is very good 1.9 to 2.5 per centimeter square that will be uh, by breaking down the SNAP25 protein it will act, uh, block the acetylcholine release and if the patient is refractory to your medical treatment and it is affecting the quality of life of the patient greatly then the surgical measures these are all medical and if the refractory patient uh, there is no improvement with any of the medical treatment then we can go for surgical treatment but surgical treatment 
Ingress is a morbidity and it is not 100% curative. Like sectioning of nerves, auricular temporal nerve sectioning, tympanic nerve sectioning, glossopharyngeal nerve sectioning or greater auricular nerve section or a barrier cap can be kept between this and in severe cases this skin can be excised and it is closed with a graft. Okay, so they are all uh, extremely rare surgeries and it, it can be done only in highly refractory cases. And you should remember that face syndrome once happened, it's, it will not progress. And in children, unilateral cases, 69 percentage, around 69 to 72 percentage of cases will improve spontaneously without any treatment. So if the patient is asymptomatic, there is no need of treatment and can be followed up only for academic purpose. And the prophylactic measures as I uh, described that has to be done while doing a parotidectomy in order to prevent the occurrence of Frey syndrome. Thank you.